everyone. I am Mitat Chan. Welcome and thank you for joining us. I'm a senior pattern making instructor at Isutsuta Marangoni Milano. Previously, I taught fashion design and garment construction at New York Fashion Institute of Technology, Politecnico di Milano, and other prestigious universities. For the last three years, I have been a part of the Marangoni family. On the Milan campus, we are a small team of Clotre D teachers. Eriza Ibrahimi, Loredana Pizzata, Stefano Peloso, and myself. We teach Clotre D in our BA Women's Wears, Men's Wears, Accessory Design, and MA Fashion Design courses. In Italy, the Bachelor of Art in Fashion Design is three years. We teach Clo in all three years. Together with program leaders, I designed the Clotre D scheme of work for second, third year, and master classes. Then, we implemented Clotready in our curricula before the pandemic. We strongly believe in innovation and technology. Why we implemented Clotready? The answer is very simple. Marangoni always was and continued to be a pioneer in innovation. Therefore, it was a truly natural process for us to implement Clotready in our courses. How? The answer to this question we will find in following slides. Actually, we faced several challenges when we started to teach Clotre D. Most of them are related to the pandemic. We had already started teaching Clotre D to our second year BA students and to our MA students. Then when the pandemic happened, we decided to teach Clotre D also to our third year students. Before the pandemic, we designed our courses with the idea that the students should use the campus computers. When the pandemic happened, we find ourselves in a completely different position. We find that our students' computers are not optimum to run Clotredi, especially because their graphic cards did not support well Clotredi, or recording of the animation work through the slope on their devices. As a solution, we decided to buy servers and to create virtual machines to offer to our students. And as you know, Claude does not recommend virtual machines. Therefore, our IT team literally invented solution to allow us to use virtual machines. Another problem is more related to the Claude 3D. Claude suggests to use three button pointing device, but our students are used to trackpad. So believe me, it was super, super hard to persuade a student to start to use a mouse and leave to use the trackpad. Anyhow, the biggest challenge that we had was update our teaching method. When we were teaching Claude 3D in our campus, students could follow the teacher's second from projectors. But when we started to teach in blended mode or when we were at home, it was hard for students to follow class in Zoom and to practice in the meantime. One solution could have been to use two devices, for example, iPad to follow the class and computer to practice. But we were looking for a more efficient solution, which could work for everyone. Therefore, I proposed an alternative teaching method to divide our courses into theory and practice days. I created Claude 3D video tutorials for theory classes. On theory class days, I would share these tutorials with the students. In this way, they could watch them anytime they wished, and in practice day, I will check their works, help them to solve their problems, or improve their projects. Now, in my second year of teaching Claude 3D, I have an enormous library of tutorials, and I realized how important it is for students to have these short videos. Every teacher has his, her methods. Today, besides pandemic, after two years of Claude 3D teaching experience, I strongly believe in tutorials. They become a key part of my teaching model. I organize them in a drive folder, which I share with my students. I would like to show you these drive folders because I think it will give a concrete idea of how my courses are structured at Marangoni. As you can see, there are four main areas. Claude 3D assets, Fabric for Claude 3D, it's basically a fabric library. We have a pattern library and video tutorials. In Claude 3D assets, students will find Claude assets compatible 
with our avatars, motion, and poses. The fabric folder is divided in several sections. One of them fabric with maps, where they can find several 3D manipulation with displacement map, normal map, roughness map. We have also several other folders with just textures. And from the day that Claw released 6.1, we were able to also create our customized fabric and export them. So now also students can find our fabrics that made by teachers. Our pattern library is divided into two sections, men's sphere and women's spheres. Here you can see what includes the women's wear section. We have different trousers, kimono, raglan, dress, different body type. Basically, all the patterns that normally the students can find on the fashion lab in the campus, they can find also in this folder as a Clotred project file. Plus, of course, there are additional patterns that I created in these years based on students' requests and needs. So we enriched our virtual library. The same folder like women's sphere, we have also for men's sphere. And finally, our video tutorial folder, which is available in two languages, because in Marangoni, we deliver courses in Italian and English. So in this way, both languages have the same content. We have here three main area, basic tools, advanced tools, and pattern making. In the advanced tool, this is what my students find when they click on the advanced tool. For example, padded jacket for me is an advanced skill because a padded garment could include besides padding, also top stitching, pack carrying, changing the stitching tension. Maybe you have to play with the shrinkage value to give more realistic look for the garment. So here, what is included, the padded jacket folder, as you can see, there are eight videos plus the zipper texture and zipper fabric. So students, if interested, the whole process can follow in order or he or she just interested in one part of it. Sorry for this. She or he is just interested on one part, can just follow the part that is looking for. This is the final result in case they correct the follow-up tutorials. Here we have the last section, one dedicated to the pattern making and alteration. As you can see, also this part is divided into several folders. Here you can see what the color folder include. It has several color types, but also for very basic, extremely basic ideas like neckline enlargement, overlapping value, fusible fabric, we have short videos. So if by chance student does not remember a specific topic, can find the, can easily find what looking for. As of this May, we also started to teach Claw 3D to our first year student as well. We starting teaching Claw with basic tools and have to use them for pattern alteration. In second year, we teach advanced tools and we create real digital prototypes. In third year, we are more focused on students' own collection and helping students to develop their outfits in Claude 3D. Since Claw always release a new version, normally every term we start what is new class. So we teach new comments to students. And after that, on the third year, instead of having theory classes, I have just one-to-one -one review days with the students. I explain to them how to make their own creation. And if there are any tutorials that fits their needs, I suggest them which tutorials to follow. Once digital prototyping is done, they print out the patterns and do fabric prototype. And we have fitting days during which I check the physical prototype. And if it is necessary, we do alterations in digital and in real prototype. When this is done, finally, we can create render and animations and students continue to realize the outfit in final fabrics. Here we have some examples. Victor Varga, he is studying men's spheres at the third year in Marangon University degree. You have his technical drawing and illustration. Here we have 
his digital prototype and plus physical prototype. They are first prototypes, so first pictures. Here we have Elisa Utley. She is studying women's wear on third year. Again, her illustration, technical drawing, and club prototype. Here you can have a better look of club prototype. As you can see, beside the classical shapes, we try to experiment with new volumes and with new shapes. Elisa successfully realized this new volumes also in the real fabric. As you can see, the resemblance is very high between her illustration between Claude 3D prototype and the final physical prototype. So we are super happy with the result. Nitya Sasit Haran, she is also studying on third year. She created this garment after six weeks of claw learning experience. And after eight weeks on total, she already made the real garment. So of course the Claude 3D prototype will be improved. But when you have a student that after six weeks achieved this result, as a teacher, I was very, very satisfied. And just after two weeks, already the physical prototype was ready. So also since everything done in eight weeks, the quality of the picture is a little bit under our quality level. But just, just to make you understand how quickly our students achieve very high results. I would like to turn back to our teaching method and I would like to share with you a small video. Here you can see how we also use Claude 3D to experiment with new volumes. Here you can see a video where I suggest to my student to use shrinkage value to experiment with new shapes and volumes. Once students are done with experimenting, they discuss with the design teacher which shape could work better, and we start to create that volume in the correct construction method. In the next slide, we have example. Giovanni Porta, he is again studying on the third year, so this is the one that we used correct construction method. But basically, before to make the real pattern, we use this shrinkage value experimenting. For us, the quality insurance is very, very important. And we want to be sure that students' prototypes could be close as possible to the dear illustrations. Therefore, I ask them to create a rectangle in Portretti, where to apply as a graphic dear illustration and technical drawing. In this way, from the very beginning to the very end, we can always compare what we are doing. Here you have an example that I created for my students. So on the left in the 3D work area, you see my 3D prototype. On the right in the 2D work area, we have Prada's original photos. This is how does look our work areas with this giant rectangle. Always we deactivate this rectangle in the 3D area to have faster, to use faster by the software. And here you can have, you can compare my Claude 3D prototype with the original picture. We use this kind of project to also encourage students because we realize that when students see that the final level of the quality and the final result is very high, they are more welcome to learn the software because they know where can achieve. They already know that they can do literally almost real prototypes in Claude. So that's give them more love and desire to know how to use the software. Here you can see Juliana Baldi's work. She is also studying third year in Marangoni. She is in the men's wear courses. Here you have her illustration, technical drawing, and her prototype. You can see here her huge rectangle, with all the patterns. Here you can compare illustration, technical drawing, and digital prototype. On the top, you can see print layout from Claude 3D. 
And on the bottom part, we have from our fitting days where we check the garments and we actually do fittings. So the fixtures are unfortunately again under our quality level, but are useful to give you the concrete idea of the whole process. Ella Babayeva, she's studying women's fair again on third year. This is a kind of the presentation that we ask the students. So from this page, you can see the presentation prepared by Leila. So her outfit with the fabric chart and some inspiration image for the manipulation. Her illustration, technical drawings and hardware color charts. Again, a uh, drawing for the manipulation. We have here to the patterns exported from Cloud 3D. Here you can have digital prototype. And this is the prototype in Mazdan fabric. Unfortunately, still not ready the final fabric one. So that's why I cannot share with you. Here, Carlotta Brancaccio. Again, she's studying third year at the Sutra Marangoni. We have her illustration, technical drawing, and claw prototype. Here you can see the patterns and her muslin fabric prototype while she was working on it. Sofia Belluati, again, she is from third year. You can see here her first prototype with a cheaper fabric because it's not muslin, it's again wool, but you know, a little more. Other the less expensive than the real one. Here we have the digital prototype. And here on the hanger, you can compare technical drawing to the garment. We also teach accessory design cloth ready. These projects are followed by Eriza Ibrahimi. So from this slide on, teacher that followed the project is Elise Ibrahim and not me. Luigi Carrara designed this bag from third year in accessory design. Here, Tyron Delgado make glove using fur and knitted fabric. Here we have some bags from Anita Bayopi. First one of white for the brand and here have she present her project with had also at the end of the term. Here in master courses, Lauren Garner, she has here some inspirational image, her illustration and cloth ready prototype. Here you have some more examples from her book. And this is my last study case, Mirhi Banberton. She's one of the art master students. Here I was amazed by the quality of her work, especially in details and the fabric, the use of the particle distance. So I want to add my presentation with her garments and here you can see on the hangers. I hope it was not too fast. I have this bad habits to talk very, very fast and I am at the end of the, my question. I hope it was clear and I hope you enjoy it. Yes, it was a really great presentation. Thank you so much um, for this insight, uh, full presentation you did just now. It is really great to see how you have been able to lead, uh, be able to really teach the students using the tutorials and they be successfully also using it for their personal um, presentations. 
um, uh, in their personal projects, let's say. Uh, I'm sure now that all of you have questions um, for Mita Jan. And if you like to raise your questions, please feel free to raise your um, uh, virtual hands um, using the labeled reaction button or directly typing it into the chat. And I will try to um, get to all of these questions and um, yeah, read them out loud in order to um, for Mita Jan to answer them. So let's see what we have. Um, there is one um, question about textures. I think it's really mo more about your experience with textures. Um, uh, have you ever tried um, to work with two textures and how they can be look more realistic? Basically, uh, we work with the tool. I understand why Andrews make this question because the tool looks like very stable in the claw on the first stage, but they are physical property of the fabric. So to give more realistic look, we open silk knitted jersey fabric and we apply tool texture on the top of it. In this way, it's smoother based on my experience. Tool knitted fabric is the one of that fall down more smooth. Again, you can open the physical properties of the fabric and a little bit go down with values of backing, I think, the name, backing, because I let me copy from my computer how is the name of the line, just I need one second, yeah, bending. Bending weft, bending wrap, and bending bias. They are three on the line. So when I see the name, I remember, but now I miss it. Sorry, because sometimes my English between me. So you can make a lower bending values to give more smoother look to your fabric. So that's how we solve our tool issue. Cool, great. Um, there is a few more questions related to really um, teaching. Uh, but first of all, um, there is someone who'd like to know um, how long you've been using CLO and what training did you do to be able to teach the students then? Uh, basically, I started to use CLO trading in 2018 and I didn't have any training before I explained to Natasha and Natalie at the beginning of the, our meeting that I learned cloth ready for a very, very personal use. Yeah. And I can tell the reason. Yeah, if you like to. I think it's a really great reason. <laughs> In 2019, I got married. And the year before, I started to make research for the garment. And actually, my spouse is very, very needy and make his groom dress was a big experience for me. And then I decide if I have to do Calico and Muslim for example, that will gonna take forever to make him happy. And I heard about that Marvelous design has a spin-off cloth that you can make virtual prototype. It's very easy to use this and that and say, okay, let me discover how much easy to use. And I downloaded, there was a 30 days of free trial and then I forget about this event and I never used and it expired my 30 days to revise. And I wrote them the claw by explaining them it's expired and I couldn't use and they extended my trial use in order that I can use it. I was super, super happy and I make my husband groom garment in the claw. And then uh, he loved it, the idea, and my mother-in-law loved it. My mother was jealous and then I started to make also their garments in the claw trading. And in this way, I get my first touch with the club. Yeah. And when Marangoni organized courses for our teachers in club trade, I said, okay, I know I have to use it. So I don't have to attend the course. So, and then they discovered that I already know it. So it was a very, very personal reason. But as you know, club release every six months, almost a new version, but they make webinar. These webinar are available in multiple languages and they're always available in YouTube. So sometimes on Sunday, I bring my computer and I watch 6.1, what is new, 6.0, what is new. Sometimes from their webinar, also when they release a new version, there's a huge list of 
what is new. Believe me, line by line, I go to the read what is new, what they added, what is coming soon, because I re- learn more when I read and not when somebody explained me. I am almost 40 years old. On my time, we were studying from the books, so I have again this attitude. But I figure out that my student has a from a new generation. They learn from tutorials, they learn from videos. So I created totally new environment to me for them to make them easy to use. Since somehow I copy Claw, because when you use Claw on the top in every tool, we have short videos about how to use Claw, but sometimes they are just applied on a rectangle, but not on the sleeve, not on the collar. So it's easier to students understand when it's applied on a physical garment rather than geometrical shape. So I just stole their idea and <laughs> added my garment construction skills and create these drives. But it's really great to understand that you really are involved um, to this level of teaching others by really um, trying to get to this new way of teaching yourself also by using tutorials and so on. And it's really great to see that. Um, and then another question would actually be, how many hours uh, are you teaching then Claude to the students each year? <laughs> you will not gonna believe but a lot, a lot. I mean, because it looks like that we are four teachers, but Loredana started to teach from the May. And Eriza actually works for Prismatex in Italy. So she yeah. can just work a few hours. And Stefano, he is in Marangoni Frenze campus, Florence campus. So he can just do some hours. So all the rest I do. I can ensure you from Monday to Friday, from 8.30 to the 8.30, I have four classes all five days. So I teach 40 hours club per week. So that's what I tell to Natalie and Natasha. I learned a lot from my student mistakes, from their questions, to be able to answer them, you know, to also inspire them, mm-hmm. to give them a solid idea of the teacher that has behind their shoulders. Mm-hmm. I was keep trying to learn even more, even more. So, because it's very sad to say to a student, I don't know, or I cannot help you. So sometimes I was telling them, this is very advanced. Let me explain something else. The next week we will see how to do this. And I was going to discover on internet how to do that in order to, to be able to do that the next week because I have around 300 students. So from the 300 students, they can come several different questions that you never expect. One of this was the other days a student by himself, he discovered how he can apply HDRI image to the dome light in the claw to the render. But when you put the ground shadow, claw cut out the half of the image because under the ground shadow, you cannot see the pictures from the dome light. And he was helping for, he was hoping for my help. I was, okay, send me your file of my email. I will try to do my best. So literally, I just learned from also their questions. And it's a very nice experience and journey for me. Perfect. That's great. And do you think like um, for the students, do they have um, pattern making knowledge before they start um, in your program? Yeah. Is it helpful? Yeah. Basically, but what we did at the beginning, because we started from the second year, that on the second year that the students apply properly or does not apply properly pattern making, we didn't give that much importance. It was more important, how does it look on the avatar? On the third year, we give more importance if the pattern making is correctly applied, because at the first touch, learn all the cloth and correctly apply pattern making. We still use, Marangoni's pattern construction method from the historical, I mean, from our history. So there are from 20 years that we are using the same methods and we are super meticulous on how we apply that millimetrically. I think also that's make difference of the Marangoni. We can't wait from a student that on his first child, Mm -hmm. 
touch the cloth to apply all the Marangoni pattern construction to the cloth. So first two years, we just check like this, the pattern, <laughs> and on third year, we give more importance to the fitting because they have to print out, cut and sew. Okay, I see. And um, do they sometimes use the pattern, draft the patterns directly in, in CLO or do they import it also from other third-party software in their projects sometimes? No, basically we have the patterns library. They can open, alter, change them. Or sometimes I show them maybe on Pinterest or another book, they find some interesting pattern that they can import as a graphic in CLO in a square. And then with a trace tool, like polygon tool, they can trace it. And once that they have a clear idea of the shoulder dimension or waist dimension, they can scale and in somehow digitalize the pattern. Sometimes they find easily to use Illustrator for tracing part instead of club, but some others prefer immediately from the club because they know that at least it will work, that importing part of the DXF, they will not gonna have issue later. So most of you use CLO. Okay, so they really have freedom to start wherever they like and then, okay, beautiful. We have a raised hand here. I'm going to unmute um, the participant. Um, Serene? Yes, hello. Uh, <laughs> actually, some of my doubts were answered during the, in the waiting. Uh, I'm an, um, a Marangoni alumni myself. I went there like uh, 2006 or seven. I can't remember now. <laughs> oh, great. Um, and now I'm a teacher in, in Spain. So I, was, I teach uh, pattern making actually. And I was trying to, to implement CLO 3D uh, on the school. So I wanted to, to learn how other people is doing it. Mm -hmm. It's been super, super interesting. I really love uh, the method. And I think it's great for people who still doesn't know how to pattern make themselves. It's, it's, it's really great. I was wondering um, how, how long do you need before a student can be um, like um, work on his own? How, how, how long do you need to work with students before they can work on their own? I can tell you, of course, it depends from the student's quality. You know, I mean, the student's desire to learn CLO, but we have, for example, in master courses, three term, each term eight week, first eight week, our aim teach almost everything about CLO. It's challenging. So maybe not 100%, but 70%, 80% we try to teach in eight weeks. Because in the second term, they have eight weeks to create two outfits in CLO 3D. Maybe each of them are three pieces. And on the third term, they have to do render animation and in case to do the real fabric, the garment. So in 24 weeks, they have to learn software, make two outfits, make animation, make render and realize the real garments. In case of some of my students that I'm super proud of them because they came from Marangoni, Mumbai. And in Marangoni, Mumbai, we don't teach cloth trading in the second year. So they just arrive on the third year like Nitya. And in basically eight weeks, she learned how to use Kulo. She did this, maybe I can share again my screen and go to the presentation quickly. Okay, I will go. Just I need one more second. You have that second for sure. <laughs> Thank you. So, Basically, Nitya achieved this result after five weeks from her first touch with Clotrede. It is not normal. So <laughs> it's not <laughs> what normally happens. But after eight weeks, there was also the final garment. That's but the reason. How many hours did they do per week? Like two each hours student? and a half. Two hours and a half per week. That's per it. Week. That's okay. It. 
And she basically, since on the third year, we do one by one, she has 10 minutes to discuss with me. Okay. So after <laughs> 50 minutes of discussion, he arrived on that result. After 50 minutes of discussion with the teacher, 10 minutes every week. That's why I am telling tutorial makes a lot because she knows that she has to learn top stitching, she got top stitching. She know how to learn packing, she got packing. She needs to make sleeve enlargement, she go to the sleeve enlargement folder. Of course, when I receive the air file, I tell them every single tutorial that they can use to achieve that result, plus all the missing part, because tutorial cannot have all the information for everyone. So it's more also students' success rather than my success. So I think... <laughs> okay. <laughs> Also for the Mihriban, the last one that I show in the presentation, this is what she did after 12 weeks. So the last one on the presentation, I would like to escape, but okay. In this way, I can do fastly. She achieved this result after 12 weeks. So, and for me to see that realistic jersey also did not hear I was literally amazed. Also the elastic line, the piping. It's all about if the students has inspiration. I think in the cloth trade, the, the biggest role of the teacher, it's not teaching them cloth, but to inspire them to learn cloth, to show them what cloth can do, to make them love cloth. For example, in my first courses, before they teach everything, I just teach them how to change color, how to personalize their avatar, how to use the layers. And I give them several outfits so they can apply texture that I want, they can apply the color, they can customize their avatar, and they can also make a quick animation. So they have a wonderful job done in two hours, ready to share on their Instagram, ready to share on their LinkedIn. So once that they start to share this information on their social media and they receive feedbacks from the parents, from the family, from the other colleagues, they get excited about the software and they have a reason to learn that software because they are not on that level that they achieve, they show because they just receive outfit already done by teacher. They just take color, look, play with the texture. So they see that if they arrive on that level, there's a huge uh, satisfaction in terms of personal achievement. And they say, okay, I want to learn the software. And they start to learn. Yeah, it's, it's very stimulating. It, it, yeah, yeah. it bumps you. <laughs> It's about Great. personal motivation a lot, I believe. And uh, what we, I think, also learned in terms of you as a teacher motivating them, you use a lot of tutorials um, as a tool to really get them to their individual levels as well. And there is this question of how you, you are building up these tutorials. Are you using other software to do so? How are you prepping these? Uh, basically, I have a very simple software to cut the videos, you know, because... As today, sometimes I miss some words in English or even in Italian because I am half Turkish, half Spanish. And it's hard for me to make tutorial in both languages that are not my mother tongue. So I have to stop so many times. So I have just a software to put them together, the short parts of the video to edit them. And that's it. And literally, I, don't, I did just in one languages in English, the one that I speak it, my Italian level is much better, better than my English level. So I do in the level that is harder for me to do. Then I literally cancel the voice from editing video in English and I make Italian since I have more higher level in Italian. It's easier for me to make short sentences or make longer sentences. So fill the gaps and I can better play with the languages 
to make that it's work that students cannot understand. My my students are that intelligent that they say they don't hear the click of the mouse. That when the tutorial is on the original language, they can hear the click of the button of the mouse. They say this is originally made in English. This is originally made in Italian. And <laughs> I am amazed how much attention they pay because they say sometimes we have to count how many times you click to understand <laughs> where you click what you did. That's great because that also tells us that they are very serious about their um, um, uh, learning, teaching skills and so on. I think we are a little bit running out of time because you're giving us so much uh, insightful additional details here in, in your answers. Maybe one more question and there's a few questions in one, um, one chat. It's about Uh, rendering and animations. So how do you do it with animations and longer videos? Do you have an in-house gaming computer? Can the students learn it um, uh, and render using the laptops? What has been the hardware process in Marangoni? Basically, since the animation calculation is very long on our students' computer, and if you have to make render animation, it's become truly hard for them. We have these servers, around 65 servers, and students can achieve 24 hours, seven days on these servers and use from any part of the earth our school computers that we have highly recommended closed settings. You know, there are specific computer requirements from the club. We have that highly recommended package on these servers and we use them. I have a gaming computer for myself, so I use a gaming computer for that. And I think I answered the question. Yes, that's perfect. Okay, there is even one more question. I also would love to hear the answer to. Um, uh, so let's, we're already a little bit over time, but let's maybe have this really one last question. Um, how long do you do the handbag students study, Chloe? Are there a classic specific to this area? Can you share a little bit or is that, um, because we are learned that this is not your main part, but maybe you already have also have insights for that? I didn't understand that question actually. Um, how long do the handbag students study, Chloe? Are there classic specific- Handbag, what means? The bags? Handbags. Yes. I don't know the meaning of the handbag. Okay, that is more a recess point. So your co-workers um, uh, focus, right? Richard, I don't know the meaning of the handbag, so I cannot understand the question. Uh, a bag, um, an accessory. A handbag. Okay, yes. <laughs> I get it now. I never think the handbag. And I was looking for a more, you know, concept than right at the product. I literally, I never teach accessory design. That's Eriza's area. So I have two tutorials for handbag because I think in 5.2, color release this 3D shape that you can literally click on the top and achieve the pattern and play on that. So I make these two bags to give the students an idea, but I really prefer to don't express myself because I don't want to give any okay. wrong information. Okay, um, I understand. Thank you um, still. Um, I think we're just going to take this topic of back creation and teaching back creation also for maybe a next academic month and then we can have maybe more insights also on that next time. So yes, again, I think we are running out of time and I really like to thank you um, so much for this inside presentation um, and really sharing all the details also in the answers to the, all the questions we had. Um, we hope that uh, all of the participants were able to gain also this valuable insights and um, to, to have, are inspired really using them also in their academic institutions and see what's possible. In order to continue, to continue the conversation, we really like to ask everyone uh, who is interested to sharing their contact information to type share again into the chat as we did last time for the ones who already attended. We will create a list in the next couple of days and weeks that we're gonna share so that you can keep in contact and you maybe can also ask directly Mita Jan about more more questions. Um, so thank you again for joining us and a huge thank you to you, Miha Jan. It was really a pleasure to, to um, join you in this meeting today. Uh, and yes, um, there's going to be one more session in this academic month. So please register in case you haven't and we're gonna see you then next week again. Mm -hmm.